Simplified Gardening's live stream and in today's episode we've got a fantastic guest and the topic of today's stream is uh, Worm Composting 101, a sustainable solution. And our guest today, well, he's going to come to you all the way from down under. It's like 6.40 or 7 o'clock there in the morning now, so it's really early for him. Uh, but he is made sure he's available so that he can pass on his knowledge. Now, this guy, his name is Marty, and he has done so much stuff with worm composting, and he's going to be able to give you a ton of really good tips and information. You're going to be able to hear about some of his uh, studies and things that he has done over the time. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to bring Marty in. But before I do, I just wanted to tell you, if you have any questions, put Q, capital Q, and put the question in all caps for us. It's easier for me to see them. Uh, I am working on a system where that's going to separate all of the questions and everything else, and we'll have a lot of other stuff, but I'll probably be into the new year now, okay? So put your questions in Q, and it'd be really good if you want a specific person to um, answer that question. If you put a name there, Marty or Tony, and that way I think it'll be really good. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to bring Marty in and uh, and we'll go from there, guys. Hi, Marty. How are you doing? Good morning from Australia. Yep. 6 a.m. here. I'm, I'm doing Six. all right. I'm, a, I'm an early bird anyway, so... Oh, yeah. Good, good. Well, All look, good. I want to thank you for um, coming on. For those of you who have never met you before, or don't know who you are, uh, why don't you tell us all a little bit about yourself, uh, about your channel and everything else? Yeah, OK. Well, just a, a quick brief one so we can get right into it because time's super valuable. But, but firstly, my name's Marty Ware. I am an Australian agricultural horticulturist. So I studied agribusiness and I majored in horticulture and a couple of other units. and over the years, I've, you know, I've really been into sort of like small space, micro farming, things like that, and using organics and stuff to create these sustainable gardens. And it's really only been the last few years that people are really getting more interest uh, in it. But I've discovered a way of using compost worms to make a lot of my inputs and just by getting all of the waste and things coming out of the house and wherever else I can get hold of it. And yeah, I'm growing these uh, amazing gardens at minimal cost and really stepping back to a, a natural uh, system. It's a bit like what you said for uh, the, you know, the, what is it called? The title of this, you know, sustainability. Yeah, so sustainable solutions. Yeah. Yeah. It's a sustainable solution. And, you know, I've just been pushing the envelope for quite a few years now, even like selling compost and things like that, because what I'm finding is, is that I could never get what I wanted. And when I was micro farming, I had to even make my own composts using worms and organic compost and things to grow the food that I sold to the restaurants because I sold to high end restaurants that want and only really good organic stuff. And eventually I figured out, well, you know, I'm making all this stuff. I'm, I might as well see if I can sell it too. And then I started selling it. And, and you know, like I've just been showing that on my channel, sort of like my life and moving through how I'm doing it and mixing it up with some education along the way of teaching people how to do it. So at Marty's Garden on YouTube. So that's the name of my channel. And really that's, you know, it's, it's a big story, but if people want to know more, they just need to go and have a look at that. But Brilliant. I'm just really excited to just get out value to your yeah. audience today. You Great. Know? Well, that's what it's all about. And guys, for those of you uh, looking in now, Danny has put a link to Marty's channel in the chat for you. Uh, before we continue, Marty, I just want to say hello to some of the people who are already in. And um, I'm not going to go through everybody, but um, we've got uh, Rob is in, Jean's in, Hassan, Jenny, Amelia, uh, Graham's in. Uh, who else we got here? Uh, Catherine is in, uh, obviously Danny, Samantha, there's quite a few of you guys in, KP, two lads at the Lotti, um, gosh, so many, Gardner, Scott, hey Scott, how you doing mate, it's nice to see you in here, um, so look guys, there's loads of you in, Chris is in, hi Chris, I hope you're feeling better, um, KT's in, so there's loads of people coming in already, <coughs> excuse me guys, so 
I thought this would be a really interesting subject because you all know that I absolutely love composting. This is why I wrote the book on it as well. And um, it's actually how I happened across your channel, Marty, because when I saw the stuff you was doing around worm composting and, and, and breeding your own worms and building worm farms and everything else, it's something that really sort of resonated with me. So can you tell us a little bit about that and what, you know, and what you was doing at the time I sort of found you? Okay, so we're going back to how long ago would that be? Because we've been chatting for a while oh, on Facebook. So yeah, it's been to be honest with you, it's been a few years. But you were yeah. way back when you know it was yeah. mainly co uh, composting around worm farming and stuff when I first found yeah. you. It wasn't yeah. so okay. much gardening then. Yeah, so it's it's been a shift from sort of the small space gardening to the micro farming, and then you know just getting better with the composting worms and things like that. And you would have caught me when I was down living at Camden Haven. Um, I'm right. back in the Byron Shire now where I spent most of my life. Uh, that's an amazing story in itself, how I was able to get back home. But I, at that time, I was actually starting uh, the micro farm again. So I was just starting to make my own compost again to grow my own food because I couldn't get anything decent. And I started selling it and stuff. And so then uh, you would have been turning up around about that time when I was starting to put it together. And so yeah. I was putting worm farming systems connected up to windrows. That's right. And then I have small worm farms connected around the place. And so it was all interlinked. So it actually, any worms that escaped went off into the garden underneath the mulch, back into another worm farm. Uh, I called it my, my microbe highways sort of thing. And so... You would have been around about that time when I was really scaling up uh, the worm system to not only grow the plants, but also to start as a, as a marketable product as well. You were actually selling the compost and, and the worms and all sorts at some point, weren't you? Because um, I remember not so long ago before you moved, you built these huge um, concrete walled um systems so that you could have these yeah. windrows and uh, yeah. i just thought wow we're, that's dedication there like you know <laughs> well we actually we moved from the house so i was around the side of the house and i was really lucky i lived in an area where it was full of um it, it wasn't sort of outbuilt where people were just worried about money and stuff and saying oh this guy's doing this i would have looked like the bit of a hippie in the street even though i don't dress like a hippie you know yeah. I, I live this bit of it you know like that alternate sort of lifestyle <laughs> and um all the all the oldies because retired area just love me because they were coming around and buying co i was giving stuff away and plants and things and they just thought it was great like someone even gave me a wheelbarrow you know like yeah. i love what you're doing man i see you shoveling all day here's you know uh, i'll give you a voucher you can go and buy a wheelbarrow and i was doing it really tough then because i just had moved and yeah. um it was it was a bit of a so it was on a shoestring budget like oh totally and um so yeah it was really cool in that regard but then i moved uh to a landscaping area and i was helping them promote their landscaping place and i got one big bay to myself a big concrete bay and that's when i started uh sort of scaling up there even further and then all of a sudden i got the call hey there's a house for you, you can come home. And I was just like, all right, I'll pack up shop. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> and uh, we're kicking off again. But this is like a whole new, whole new, this is this is like garden slash worm farming, composting, sustainability 101. Like this is, I believe this will be a model for a lot of people. Uh, coming I think it future. has to be a model because um, the issue you have is a lot of people's uh, food consumption now is going to have to go where they grow it themselves for the simple reason being is that it's just so expensive to buy now and people are worrying about the prices of everything and i think we'll see a massive influx of new gardeners coming in over the next year or two where they are looking to use the money they have to pay f to keep the house warm but then yeah. you know grow their own foods and, and everything else and i think that'll be a good thing but the problem you have with uh commercial farming and things like that is the you know the nutritional value isn't there anymore because they've killed the ground with all these herbicides and pesticides and everything else you know and uh and the microbial life just isn't there anymore 
Yeah. And it's something that I've been quite passionate about, uh, as a lot of the viewers will know. And um, it's building that mic microbiology back in the soil that is going to feed us for the rest of our lives. Um, so what got you started with the worm farms? OK, so when I, um, I just so people know a little bit more about me, I am I work, I live in a small town like called Byron Bay. It's a big town now, but it was only 3,000 people when I was a young fella, you know, in the whole Shire. Yeah. And um, it was sort of this alternate sort of place, you know, and I was always interested in growing food and stuff like that. And I just sort of moved into that sort of thing, learning more about it over time. But I went overseas. I ran a surf school in Thailand in Phuket for about, I was there for about five years. My daughter was born there. Then we came back and I, again, had to start again sort of thing. And I only had this little veranda and I was like, how can I, I can grow all this food in containers and things. This is what kicked off Marty's Garden YouTube channel, yeah. right? But I'm going, yeah. I don't want to go buy all these inputs, you know? And I was thinking, hey, I've done worm farming before and it worked really good. And this is, there was no information about worm farming 12 years ago, right? So right. I'm like, I need to learn how to do this. So I, I bothered this guy who was a worm farmer and started setting up, making some mistakes. I'd ring him up and get some information and things. And it, it started working. I was like, hey, I... I'm making my own fertilizer here. Hey, I'm making my own liquid teas and things. Hey, hey, and this is all going into pots. And I'm thinking, hey, I'm on a winner here. You know, like all I'm using is my scraps coming in from when I'm cooking and stuff like that. And uh, all of a sudden, I was growing all these amazing plants in, in containers. And I was like, I was one after that. I've never looked back, basically. Yeah, great. And that sort of falls in quite nicely with this Facebook user who's there's no name, so I don't know who this is. But they said, hey, Tony and Marty, I'm hoping to find out whether I could use worm composting to compost cooked food waste, cheese, general plate scrapings, etc. I compost most of the stuff already. And at the moment, this all goes into the council food waste collection. So what's your views on that, Marty? Okay, so what I like to do with these type of things is break. Can you leave the question up there if yes, that's okay, can. please, Tony? Um, so I'll break down the question to try and get the best answer I can for you. Firstly, uh, if we're looking at cooked food waste, you've got to be careful with oils, right? So the oils can be quite detrimental going into your farm because if you've got rancid oils and things like that, that I would stay away from. I would compost that separately. And then once the fungi on that starts breaking down those oils, which it will, you can then add it to worm farming systems. Um, then you're not wasting anything. As far as uh, cheeses, um, no, you can possibly look at composting it with the other stuff I was saying, but I would avoid that, especially as a beginner. You need to really know what you're doing when you're de dealing with dairies and meats and things. So I'd avoid that. General plate scrapings, Pretty much, you, you know, like I said, as long as there's no bad oils, you can do yeah. that, no problem. Yeah. Now, for me, I would probably myself, and, and yeah, we can do that, but then you have the issue then of attracting pests like rodents and yeah. stuff like that. For me, I would probably use the Bakashi method and ferment these scraps. Um, it's a much better way of doing it than do that but then obviously don't add that to your compost for your worms because it's fermented it's not going to have the same benefit to the worms so you could go and use that as a fertilizer for your potted plants things like that but um you know at the end of the day we want to build compost but the last thing we want to be doing is attracting rodents into our garden and stuff like that that's going to cause us further problems but yeah as you said marty all of this stuff apart from the sort of dairy will compost down pretty well anyway won't it you know yeah i anything think i is... could add i could add to something to that a little bit before we move on to the next question but uh, you need to look at how i look at everything that's coming into your place you're creating these recyclable loops right so if you're taking things to an uh, it depends on your scale and where you want to go to so i like in a smaller situation if you don't have the like say the open three tiered system, open mm -hmm. composting system, yeah. you have like a tumbler or something along those lines or a bin you can open up and turn it. Um, and then, you know, that's, and once it gets about one half done, then you can add that to uh, a worm farming system. Yeah. So you're looking at, you know, like just looking at everything that you've got going, okay, 
this is valuable. People forget that they're throwing out these things into their waste and they're forgetting they paid money for that, firstly, for starters. Yeah. You went out and worked hard for that stuff to get that, to bring it in your home to feed it. Why should it leave your home when it can become a part of the recycled loop? So then once it goes through the composting system and it's fed to composting worms or, you know, along those lines, it grows into a plant and then you might be doing, say, uh, tomatoes, right, and your tomato season's finished, you're going to compost those tomato plants. So that's all stuck in that loop. And the more the minerals and different things that you're bringing into your loop, the more it's, it stays in the system. So it actually, like, just it gets better over time and it, the, the, when we get rid of something say some eggshells or something i just don't have time because i do this too i'm like i'm in a rush i'm cooking yeah sorry the eggshells are going in the bin and i'm looking at later on going oh, i just threw oh. away a whole lot of calcium and minerals yeah. and, and yeah. stuff you and, know. and especially because worms they they have gizzards like chickens they they need that grit or shell and stuff to help them digest yeah. this food you know and uh it, it's just a perfect thing that to be to be putting in that compost, isn't it? You know. Um, it, it is so, a, what do you use as a grit for them then? Uh I I do sometimes. Rarely, I'll go out and buy a big bag of uh, rock minerals, so from the yeah. volcanoes, yeah. Um, and I'll just buy it from co-ops. I very rarely buy the little packs because it's just so expensive. It's really but expensive. most of the most of the time, yeah, I'll just use egg. I'll just use eggshell. And okay. I'll, I'll basically, after I've cooked, because I've got chickens here, so I'm getting eggs daily. Yeah. And uh, we, we eat, I eat more eggs now because obviously we've got, we've got the chickens. But I just microwave them. I wash them. I microwave them for about three minutes. Yeah. Then I just crush them into a powder. And um, you'd be surprised. It just crushes up into nothing. Yeah. Especially if you put it in a coffee blender. Yeah, yeah. Or a mortar and pestle I use, yeah. I use sometimes, but I oh. lost mine I, I'm too lazy for the highest of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. Straight through. So, um, Star's just been gifted 2,000 worms. Uh, I know little to nothing about composting worms. I've used Koya for bedding. How much and how often do I feed them? Help in the US. Okay, that's a great, really good question because it's yeah. a good one for people when they're first getting started. Uh, 2,000 is a great number to start with. Uh, generally, a minimum would be a thousand that I recommend starting with. Um, and what you do at the beginning is just feed them a small amount. So you, once they settle into the farm a bit, some people say a week. I just say one to two days. Sometimes you can feed them a tiny little bit straight away, almost. You know, because the bacteria has got to get onto the food. They're skimming off the side of the bacteria as the food breaks down. So that's what they're actually eating. And so just small amounts at first. And then um, as you see, it starting to disappear when it's about two thirds gone, you add a little bit more and then you just start looking and going, OK, well, I think I can add a bit more. The trick is to not overfeed. This is where everyone makes the mistake and their worm farm gets smelly and rancid. Uh, you're better off feeding under under because they'll eat the bedding and the, so yeah. they'll eat the cocoa core and newspaper and things like that. So, so why are we talking about that then? Uh, how fine a food are you giving? Are you? blending it are you chopping it very fine what what do you do because you can bet these people with these with these questions in their head oh it's there. coming up 100 percent. Yeah. Yeah. and this is where um i slide into the worm enthusiast side of things uh i'm i'm not like this is it's quite funny that you answer that because um i'm not i'm not in an enthusiast just about worm farming even though i do that i'm about the getting the compost sustainability side of things, the inputs and growing plants. Yeah. And so, uh, oh, I can't, can, I go, can we go to the question again? Sorry, I got a bit confused. Oh, God, I lost it. Sorry, bear with me. Uh, so the question I think was, um, uh, oh, God, damn. It Sorry, got I got it. Bit... All right. How, how uh, fine do you break up the right. food are you That's blending right. it to a paste or or cutting it up? okay I, I was getting it i was going too far off track with the story to how to do it so basically the more you break it down and the finer you get it the uh the the more surface area so the worms are going to actually uh, be able to consume that faster so if you're not lazy then chop it up as much as you can like a juicer is really great because uh you know like it just it, mashes it up 
So, you know, that, that material, that organic material is really awesome. Um, so yeah, I, if you can do that, then do it. I'm a little bit lazier than that. I don't do that all the time, mm-hmm. but, um, it really just comes down to how you, how you want to do it, but the smaller, the better, basically. Okay. And what about the bedding then? Right. So we already seen now that some people use Koya, right? Uh, what are the forms of bedding? What did you use when you set up yours initially? Okay. So for beginners, you just want to go straight into Koya. You'll see a lot of um, stuff for enthusiasts on uh, YouTube here saying all different types of, of beddings, but it's Koi is the easiest one to get started with. It's the easiest one to work with. It's the easiest one to see the, how the worms are going. You're more curious at the beginning. And so when you've got newspaper, they're hiding between pieces more and uh, you're dealing with a different type of material. I, I just recommend Koya straight off straight off the rack for beginners and then look at other beddings later. Uh, I use um, sugarcane uh, for bedding. I also yeah. use mushroom compost. I really like mushroom compost. I think it's one of the better ones. Yeah. And I, you know, look, I'll get torn to pieces by the enthusiasts for this, but I don't make newspaper and cardboard bedding. But people that live in the city and stuff like that, uh, they tend to use it with just the small bins that they're putting on shelves in the garage, and th- yeah. that's when they're using that sort of thing. And I think yeah. that is is for easy separation because they're not going through, you know, the migration of moving worms to a feed a new feed area so they can harvest up here, you know, um, because yes they've got to no. harvest a bucket. Yeah, I think they make it difficult for themselves, but I don't want to get into arguments with web farming enthusiasts. <laughs> but I, I, if you're in a little city area and you've just you can if you can shred some newspaper, stay away from that white shiny stuff with inks and things on it. You can shred some, uh, you know, like the more natural the material, the better, the less processed it is. Uh, they will live and survive in that, but mm-hmm. you've sort of got to look at how what you your end result you want it to be because if they're just feeding on newspaper and the scraps um you're not going to end up with as good a quality worm casting as say you would if you went with um a straw a sugar cane or a mushroom compost which has yeah. nitrogen and minerals and th- and these things already in it the worms actually need that it's like yeah. us you know if we just go out and eat fast food every Balanced day day out, feel terrible yeah, so we want to balance their diet as best as possible. Yeah. And a good bedding really makes the world a difference. Great. Okay. So Amelia um, now asks, um, do you have a video about making wound costing? Amelia, we've put a link already in the chat for Marty's channel. It's also in the description below. Um, just get across there. He's got tons and tons of videos on it. I've got a couple on my channel, but nothing like what Marty has. That's why we've got Marty on the channel, so he can pass on his knowledge to you guys, all right? So uh, get yourself across to his channel and have a look there. So we've got another question here, which is uh, from two lads at the Lottie. I've used an old bin for years, but I've just recently got a proper worm bin. What's the best way to separate the worms from the compost? Been buying the old, uh, the odd honeydew melon, which worms seem to love. There's a few different ways to do this. I, I actually very rarely mention this because I it's a part of my course that um, I have in my um, on my channel for the worm wranglers members area. But I can give you a bit of a brief rundown if you want. If people want to really that they need to go and watch the the content to get. The full because otherwise it's a video on itself but there's a few different ways you can do it you can feed at one end of your worm farm and then you slowly feed to the other end and they move up and down and then basically you can harvest from one side and then you'll still have worms at one end but you can harvest from one side and take them out uh if you're going for a professional way you do a volcano method this is how i teach on my channel in the worm wranglers members area it's a big high volcano. I'll do it for you guys for the because I love you, Tony, and your audience. Good, so. good. <laughs> I'll share it. So it's a volcano <laughs> method, and you basically put it out in the sun. You make a volcano shape. They go down deep, and as they hit the bottom, uh, you scrape off the top. And as they're sort of like scraping off the top, they see the light. They keep going down. And yep. You just keep scraping off the top. So that's how the pros do it. That's how I teach 
uh, how, how to do it in larger volumes. Um, the other way is to just do like a migration method, the lazy mm -hmm. method. So you yeah. stick another one on top. Once they've eaten all the bedding, all the food, you stick another one on top. You put new bedding in there, new food. They all move up mm -hmm. and then you pull that bottom tray away. And that's and the principle on these stacks that you can buy. That's exactly correct. what they're using, isn't it? Right. Okay. That's cool. that's why how they're designed to work. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Right. I hope that answered your question. Um, let's have a look if there's any more while we are going. So there's one here from Steve Digwell uh, from Digwell Green Fingers channel. Uh, what do you guys think of the sub pod? If you want me to go first? You can carry on, pal. <laughs> okay. Uh, mate, I reckon it's a great product. I, I've I've been affiliated with a little while for these with these guys, but I haven't really, I don't know, I'm, I need to do it a bit more. I haven't really done a lot of filming with it, but I've got one ready to be reinstalled. Um, I've given a few away for Subpod um, over the years, and they've never once have I heard a bad thing about them. I... I've been making my own underground worm farms for years before the sub pod even come out. And I just look at their one and just go, look, this is a million times better than what I can make. I would actually rather spend the money and just buy that now um, yeah. than go out and make in my own ones. I have my own systems that connect up and all that type of stuff. But as far as in raised bed gardens go, um, I'm going to be putting them in my raised beds because, yeah, I reckon they're, I reckon they're awesome. And I really, in another way, I think we should support this company. You know, they're doing good stuff. And I think our dollar going towards something like that uh, really helps this movement move forward of understanding about what we're, you know, what this title of this, this video is about. So the answer is yes. Right. <laughs> so Marty likes them. Now, I've never Sorry, seen Sorry, I'm long-winded. That's fine. <laughs> So I've never seen the sub uh, the sub pod. And if you're going to buy it, one guys, go and get Marty's link and buy it through that, right? He's just told you he's an affiliate, right? So um, I've never actually seen the sub pod, and I so I can't really give an impression. But I believe they are uh, a composting system that goes into the bed in, in the ground, right? And I covered this a little bit with uh, Gardener Scott last week, and my thoughts around that was you would need quite a few of them in a large bed in order to move those castings around unless you're digging them through at a later stage and because i'm a no dig gardener the last thing i want to be doing is digging my ground and moving that so essentially it would be a lot of nutrition in one place if you get my drift i haven't seen the sub pod so i can't really comment this is just my thoughts on thinking about what you know what it would be you know um and you know, like I said, I, I may look at it and find I'm totally wrong, but that's just my thinking uh, around I, it. I could add to that. You, you you are right. You're actually yeah. right. So you've got a composting system that instead of like having a tiered system, it's in the ground and this, so any of the liquid will go down. It'll mm -hmm. reach to plant roots around the outside of the width of where it dispels out. And yeah. also like the worms will move 30 to 60 to 90 centimetres out and drop their castings there. So the bigger ones will move out, but then you've got to have the beds have got to be set up right. And so we're yeah. talking like another level, but very, if you, the beginning's very centralised zone for sure. And I think that's the, the, I think that's the issue like for me with those sorts of things is do you create yourself another job because if you've got a huge garden and you've got a ton of beds in there and you need just two of these pods per bed then all of a sudden you, you're buying two pods for every bed then you've got to go and fill those pods on a daily basis or a weekly basis or whatever it is and it's just work do you know what i mean and and then when you've got plants growing all around it can you get to do, do, do you see my point whereas like a, a good composting system like you 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 were talking about earlier on this this uh, volcano style you know you can be composting in a windrow or whatever i think it's easier to put that compost on the bed and you and you can move them worms around it's just my own personal opinion and everybody's got their own ways of doing things you know yeah yeah they, you're on the you're on the money there for sure um as i said this it's really like the first step 
of when you're yeah. actually putting these systems together. Like I'll be doing this on my channel and then showing how I'm connecting them all together eventually. Yeah. But I don't know if you saw Tony, but I've got another one. I use a big open, those big black yeah. um, where, um, compost ones for the lid. Mm -hmm. And I actually, I, so at the end of a veggie garden, so for example, you've got a sub pot at one end, right? And at the end of the sort of like a no dig garden, and because, um, without getting too far off track and stuff like that, I set up uh, these like big sort of like the big plastic ones with a lid, the open ground. Like a Dalek. So yeah, yeah, like, yeah, someone calls them Daleks. <laughs> <laughs> I call them the biggest, biggest worm farm ever. That's why how I do it. But I fill it full of compost, full of yeah. mushroom compost. Yeah. Uh, that's, you know, it's, that's lost its heat out of it. And then I put worms into it and they actually move around the outside. And so when you're watering the top, that the water's going down and moving it and you plant all around the bottom and the roots move up into the system. And it's it's not hardly any work. Once you set them up, all you're gonna yeah. do is throw the worms in, worm yeah. blanket and just feed the things. And once you start learning how to connect these up, because I'm so time poor at being a single dad and you know, like I don't really have family around to help and I work, you know, running my part-time job and work, you know what it's like. Yeah. So it's so important. So anyway, without getting too off track, I think you can create these systems, but you've got to move into them slowly and not yeah. get too much and, work. And, for and I think that's yeah. the thing here as well. Like I said, you know, I can't really um, give a real opinion about the sub pod itself because I've never used it. I've never really seen it. Um, I, I understand the theory behind it and I can only put my point of view on what I think it would be like. You know, I can't give a, yeah. an outright opinion on it, and I wouldn't do that either. So um, we've got Pam. Uh, knowing nothing about womb composting, where would I start? Apologize if I've missed the beginning uh, intro. Just buy yourself a tiered worm farm. You know, in the booklets, generally, they have pretty much how to do them straight away. Uh, you can pick them up secondhand if you're not to uh you know like you're just unsure about it first thousand worms good bedding good some good rain water dechlorinated water bit of organic food and uh you know as i said you can check out sort of all the worm farming stuff on my channel i've got lots of videos on there how to do that so yeah. it'll just send you in the right direction but you just need to start this is the thing it's like they say for youtube creators just press record <laughs> Well, with a, uh, <laughs> oh, with, you haven't been listening to a specific YouTube creator, do you? <laughs> with, with a worm farm, you just got to get a worm farm and just get started. You'll make a few mistakes at first and you'll just yeah. slowly get better at it. And if you're like me or anything like Tony and I, you know, you'll just see the value in it more and more as you do it. Yeah, absolutely. I'm not being rude, guys. I'm just looking for something a second. So, um, uh, Marty, if you want to share any tidbits that you know um while i'm just looking for this yeah sure um, just sure. to keep things moving yeah so for beginner worm farmers like because we've probably got a few here and I'm, i can read some of the com compost um some of the questions on the side here um so if i can grab one actually i can't really uh, why do you microwave the eggshells okay so to get the calcium we, the worms need grit and their gizzard and that helps them sort of break down the casting as it moves through. So when we microwave the eggshell, it dries it out, removes any bad bacteria. And when it dries it out for three minutes in the microwave, uh, it, it just makes it easier to crush it up into a powder. And the smaller the powder and the finer it is, uh, the faster they can get it into the system. And also it'll break down quicker in uh, a composting system if you're throwing it into a compost as well which i recommend to do the worms need a tiny little bit they don't need much at all um yeah. so yeah that's why Great. okay uh pam as well you've got the book all right page 178 it's all about vermicomposting how you go through it how you set them bins up if you've got the book already guys this is my book composting masterclass all right comes in four different formats a hard book paperback audio and ebook um be a perfect christmas present to give to somebody because what oh, we're doing here is present yeah because yeah. what it's going to do is going to help whatever person you give that to become a master of their own garden by as supplying all their own composts um including worm composting and it's going to allow you to put the life back in that soil and that's when 
you know, you're not going out and spending hundreds and hundreds of pounds or dollars on bagged soil um, because there's nothing worse. You get it home. There's no life in it. You don't know if it's full of broadleaf pesticides these days because it's all coming from green waste, you know. So by producing it yourself, and as Marty has said, nothing that you take onto your property should be going off it really you know you should be able to recycle it all back into composting and things like that daniel put a link in the um in the chat for where you can get the book um and all four formats are there okay awesome something like right. that is is i see some books like that honestly as like an investment to myself you know what yeah. i mean like yeah. um even like uh i picked up a couple more books and i just you know i read them and get audio books and things like that. And you're always continually learning. And I just see it as a really great investment. And again, I think as we're moving through and things getting more expensive and we can find ways to save money. And like you said, that problem with there's so much, like I said, one of the reasons why I made my compost is because I could never get any good stuff. Yeah. And uh, you might, it's just, yeah. And we're seeing it even more like that, here at the moment. It. We're seeing it even more here at the moment, uh, Marty, because uh, the UK is in the process of banning peat. So, um, so we they they they're now trialing peat-free composts and stuff. And of course, they don't have um, the ingredients they need to make this. So they're trying to put coir in it, but they're slamming it full of wood product and peat. Mm -hmm. So now it used to be you'd get. To, you know, you'd get loads of uh, tree surgeons wanting to drop off truckloads of wood chips to you, right? And um, which is a good ingredient for compost. Yeah, Maybe not right. so much for worm composting, but that's it's good a good ingredient for compost. But um, now you're finding that that's becoming a bit few and far between because what's happening is now it's becoming a resource for the big companies and a resource that these tree surgeons can actually sell. So, you know, they, there's there's always a knock on thing going on, but producing your own, you know, I mean, when we had lockdown, you couldn't even buy compost for love, no money, but the quality has been dreadful this last sort of year or two. Um, it's been on decline for years, Tony. Yeah. Uh, the yeah. obvious, like, um, I've been in sort of the organic side of things for a bit over two decades now, mm -hmm. and I've noticed that the product, is getting declining worse and worse because they, the whole thing about business, right, is cutting costs. And obviously, you know, like we all know when we go and buy a box of cereal from years ago, you'd go, oh, yes, yeah, uh, you know, it's yay big, 250, whatever the weight is, you know, say a thousand, whatever the weight is, and then it's $7.50. And then yeah. you go and buy it again three months later and it's, it's, it's $20. Gone. It's still the same. <laughs> so, well, or they the same price as well, and half the same price. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, and I'm looking at it going, right. So I'm always digging in, buying different products and checking it and just going, this stuff's terrible. And it's getting more and more uh, like that wood chippy sawdust yeah. stuff. And then they're going, okay, so how do we cut costs even again? Well, we just don't break it down as long. We move it out faster. Yeah. And, so and I'm sure they're it. grinding up pallets and stuff into it as well because I'm finding oh, all sorts in it. It's dreadful. It's lead. There's lead yeah. in there from old things like that. And um, yeah, man. And they and my dad said to me the other day, he's a really like I'm I'm a positive sort of guy, but he said to me, he goes, everyone's nice. I said, so no, I said, not in the agricultural <laughs> industry, they're not. <laughs> I said they're all cheating, they're doing whatever that they right. can. So yeah, look. Guys, need, you have to excuse me out, having man. a beer because I've had a bit of a hard day today. So Good I'm going to wind mate. down now. So, um, Cheers. right, let's have a look at uh, KP's got a question here. Can you clarify for me, is worm castings compost and can it be used alone or is it only something that you can add as a fertilizer? This subject confuses me. Wow, these guys, mate, your audience are just unreal. Like, this is like all the stuff that I make. I got the best about. audience. <laughs> you do, man. Can you clarify is worm casting compost? Now, it's actually the manure coming out of the worm. So, it's just a nice way of casting and saying worm poo. So, basically, what we do to get the best result out is we use about 10% in our uh, compost and blends and things like that. They've done lots of studies trying to grow over it. I've even tried to grow it straight off, but it's so valuable. It's too rich. So, 
you don't want to waste it. It won't burn your seedlings. It won't no. burn, but it's but it's just it's a waste. Actually, yeah, yeah, it's a total waste. And we want to use around about ten percent to get the best result, to get the microbiology out of it, get the nutrients out of it, and you'll find, and yeah, that's. Do you know you what? It makes an excellent fertilizer for house plants too, because if you guys have a little look all around here, <laughs> well, yeah, I'm. I'm uh, you know, I've got plants everywhere and everything has um, compost, uh, you know, sort of um, worm castings in within the mix, um, you know, so you, it, it is brilliant all around as a fertilizer. So no um, smell. And it's, na and it's natural as well. No, no smell. So it's really good like that in the house. You don't, yeah, yeah you don't attract any nasties. The house doesn't smell, it has a nice neutral smell, eh? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so uh, Danny's put um, a link up for the website, guys. Okay, more information on the website. I think I have something like 40 or 50 articles all based around different style of composting and this, that, and the other. And these are in-depth articles, uh, probably between three and 4,000 words per article. So they're really in detailed articles. So if you have any doubt of anything you're looking at as well, and you, and you don't want to look at a video, you'd rather read, go across to the website, just go to the search bar and type compost in there or composting, and it will pull up everything I've written on it. Okay. And, uh, but I do urge you guys get out there and get the book, right? Because I tell you, if, if you buy the book, you're going to have it there as a reference guide all the time. You can take it in the garden with you and, you know, you can really make a big difference. Like, I know we covered it last week, but Pam has had compost, like, in the perfect temperature for killing weed seeds and everything. I think it was like seven or eight weeks, Pam, if you want to put that in the uh, in the chat. And... Um, uh, and it's just now starting to cool down. She's like she's getting worried about it because she messaged me saying, oh, well, what if, um, you know, what if, if if it's cooling down now? Is it going to be okay? No, no, don't worry. Now's the time the worms and everything else are going to move in and finish it off for you. It's, it's maturing now, like, you know. But the book is there. And Pam would probably not have got her compost hot enough to kill everything, you know, all this time. She was so chuffed about it, putting post after post in Facebook. And I was loving that, of course, because obviously the book helped, you know. So let's yeah, have a awesome. let's have a little look, see if there's anything else here. Um, I want to say thanks to uh, all the admins as well and Danny for putting in all the links for us, you know, and, and what have you guys, because, um, yeah, you know, they, they, they're working hard and keeping you safe while we're talking as well. Um, so there's a lot of stuff going on here, uh, Marty. I'm just having a little flick through to see if there's any, um, a lot of people are talking amongst themselves, which is good. So Graham's um, got one. Tony Marty, could sharp sand be used for worm grit? Yeah. Okay. Another good question. I just want to say hello to a few of the crew that come across from the Marty's Garden viewers. So g'day, guys. <laughs> Thanks for coming And across. welcome to Simplify Gardening, guys. Yeah. 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 Um, Tony and I have been chatting for quite a while if you come in late and stuff like that. So, yeah, thanks for coming across, guys. And uh, so the question was sand. Yeah. Um, Please pull it across think, again. Yeah. Or? There we go. So can, can you sharp, sharp sand? Uh, look, most of the time when you uh, – I would actually just stay away from it, to be honest. Uh, I just don't think it's the right it's the right way to go. Um, I've never really used it because generally sand uh, is used in different types of mixes and blends and things like that. And it helps things sort of compact or drain. And we want to sort of keep moisture more locked in. So I would sort of steer, steer away from it. It's not going to hurt it, but it's not going to overall help your, your farm because it doesn't hold moisture. It doesn't contain biology. They might grab a bit of it here and there, like tiny pieces. But if that's if that's all you've got, you may put a little sprinkle in. But generally, look, I've gone for years without adding stuff in. And like in the compost itself, they do find little grits and things like that. And and uh, I, you know, when I first did it, I didn't even know eggshell was a, and I still had success. So yeah. I think sometimes people can get a bit worried about it too much. So the answer would be uh, steer away from it. Yeah, I mean, I, and I'm with you on that. You don't want to be adding uh, a sand into 
into the mix for no reason you're going to be losing the water and everything else in there and as i've already said to you guys as well with composting arguably moisture content is probably the number one rule with all compost everybody thinks it's greens and browns but the the main issue there is water when you get that right the air will be there right and and you as long as you mix everything in you're going to pretty much get it to to go well so we've got a question coming in marty from uh, another facebook user again i haven't got a name sorry what's the right composting worm i was given a trailer load of aged cow manure and saved the worms and uh, they are what i'm using generally most of the time you when you buy compost worms you get mixes so they might come and really uh unless you're an enthusiast don't worry too much about it i'll give you a quick breakdown the most the main one we use is uh, a tiger worm or some people call them reds um they've got different common names but the the latin name is called acena fetida and that is probably the most commonly worm common worm because it handles more variety of temperatures beddings things like that and then you'll and end up with the what's the common name of that for those who don't know well most people call it a tiger worm tiger. and it's got a little yellow tip on the end of its tail mm -hmm. and that's the one that you'll see the most uh without getting too far into all the different types of worms but generally when you buy them you get a mix some of them like the summer a bit more some of them like the winter a bit more the tigers will go right and, through and, they and like everything from a few of your videos that i've seen you tend to mix them yourself as well don't you because yeah for, yeah, for yeah. That i've reason, got yeah. about I mean, four or four here, or six different varieties. i think the ones that you probably found in um in the cow menu is probably like little red wrigglers um yeah. and uh you know and they're a good composting worm anyway but again like you said you know when you're buying worms it's really hard for them to say oh this is just a specific variety because they they tend to mix when they're moving composts around and things like that. Yeah, anyway. in the UK, you guys call the uh, more red wriggler because when they hit the light, yeah. they wriggle around. That's why they're called red wrigglers. So yeah, it, yeah, they're in the cow manure the most. And like I said, it's I wouldn't worry about that too much unless you're going to move into enthusiast stuff. Then you need to watch other types of content for that. Yeah. It's going a little bit off track on what we, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. sort of yeah. heading to so the next question is do earthworms and compost worms fight for territory <laughs> no not really they both hold two different zones so um if you've got say example an above ground worm farm that's connected to the connected to the ground or a composting system connected to the ground you have compost worms in it the earthworms are going to come up and they're going to go vertical they're going to grab a bit of carbon they're going to go back down and the the compost worms go across the top so um and if there's too many they just spread out more and give each other more space so they don't compete they work quite well together in certain systems yeah okay uh let's have a look at let's see what else we've got here um there's loads of people chatting here uh so what's this so the wormery kits tell people to use newspaper and cardboard yes they do uh, chris um and i think that's mainly because it's something that's relatively cheap um and they want to be able to charge you what they can for the kit and then not have to uh include a bedding and and stuff like that so question from joe what are your thoughts on asian jumping worms i have them in my yard and they eat forest litter like no other oh there's a i think you're thinking of another one called a jumping worm i don't know they've got lots of different common names there's talk about a lot of talk about these in america um i, I think that we've got to be a bit careful not like bring out information that we don't ha have a lot about there's a lot of conspiracy stuff about these type of worms and things so i, I basically i wouldn't be too bothered I, I, you know for me um it's it's a really moving into a, a question that's really hard to answer because it's just not enough data and information on it other than what people see around the outside of their gardens and forests and things like that but i wouldn't breed them myself if um they've i've had them a similar thing turn up and i i eliminated them yeah right okay 
quick one here. Would you use hay with manures like sheep and cattle in your compost? Uh, yes, definitely. Definitely. I'd say you'd probably have that in your book, that type of thing, wouldn't you, Tony? Like that type yeah. of information. Yeah, I mean, I think the biggest problem uh, with hay that people worry about is the seed from hay, okay, the grass seed that's in hay. But what you have to understand, guys, if you're composting right anyway and you get it to the proper temperatures, it's killing that seed first before the worms are ever in there anyway right you've killed all that seed off so you're not going to worry about it and then the worms will move in so it, it makes absolutely no difference i i would have no problem using myself yeah killing them off i actually like i give people a bit of a tip on this one that people want to take it next level is collect um the coffee grounds from local cafes they're throwing out tons of this stuff every day it's the gold i don't know if you have that in your book Tony. yeah Maybe we do you, you yeah do. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, this is the best stuff, man. So you would probably have the ratios and stuff in the book. Yeah, I've got like a that. whole chart of ratios of what the nitrogen yeah. and carbon content is for each uh, ingredient. So, yeah, it's in the book, a big chart of that. Yeah, awesome. So, but yeah, coffee grounds are a perfect additive. Oh, and in fact, and the I've got it in like some of my compost. It. Yeah, absolutely. I got it in some of my composting videos as well. Um, so Scott is siding with me he likes to harvest uh his worm castings and use an amendment to benefit all the soil in the bed okay so uh is that joanne joanne sorry if i've Joanne, Joni, Joni, <laughs> Joni, yes, Joni, i think Joni, Joni, yes right okay sorry <laughs> hey, um question what about the temps in cold climates in the winter wouldn't sub pods freeze so we're back on the yeah. sub pods. This seems yeah. to be a popular if, oh, subject. Any worm farm will freeze if it's freezing. You'll freeze. <laughs> we'll all freeze. You know, like uh, you basically. We minus seven uh, out there at the moment. It's freezing. Yeah. Look, um, that's a really good question. If you've got a really short growing window, I would probably stay away from them because you don't. The worms need to be between that 17 and 24 degrees to stay productive and once you go under that they really slow right down you need to have indoor systems and things like that so by the time you sort of get they get going again you've only got a six week window for them to go so i'd be more inclined to what you do tony with the hot composting and then putting yeah. that around the garden i think that's a, a, I a think better system the, the reason i take that system is because um it's i mean sometimes you know i mean our channels for everybody right we and we want to try and find the best solution that fits the most people and i think that solution would be ideal now obviously that everybody has different microclimates and if you've got you know great you know if you're up in um you know in Cairns or something in australia and you, you know it's where been tropical am. up there or where you are <laughs> you know yeah. they you're never going to have that issue. It does never freeze and, and you've got no problem with that. Whereas here, a minus seven, like we've been really warm. We've been up like 17, 18 degrees right the way up until about a week ago. And it's gone from that down to minus seven. It's been freezing today and they've just forecast snow for us. So, um, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but, you know, that way it's, I think it's it's better all round, you know, to spread it. Um, so Chris is uh, one of the moderators in the chat and she, she runs the Exploring Nature Together channel. Uh, she's got a question for newbies. I've forgotten how I resolved it, but what happened was she overfed her wormery. Um, don't remember how she fixed it. Could you answer that? So if, yeah, she, if so someone's overfed, how are they going to fix it? Yeah, so basically you need to pull some of the food out, for starters, and um, and then just add some more carbon. So the carbon will really soak up that sort of stuff as it's getting moist. So we, it's like we are talking about before, moisture is super important. So we want to keep a, mo a moist farm at around about 70 80% is the minimum. Um, and so, yeah, we just introduced some more newspaper, cardboard, uh, you know, anything that's going to soak up that uh, extra moisture but you just need to take like dig in put some gloves on take it out you know yeah yeah I agree. quickest way um so oh i think this is quite important guys don't forget to hit that like button right because that tells youtube you're enjoying marty's content right and they they'll share the video look 
guys, this is something that I don't tend to sort of ask a lot for in the videos is that thumbs up and the like, you know, because when you think about how YouTube and Facebook algorithms work, they want to see that you're enjoying the content, you're getting value from it and everything else. And that's what we try to bring here on the channel. That's why I, you know, I ask, you know, really interesting people like Marty and Scott and everybody else to come on the channel so that you get in the benefits, not just of my knowledge, but of these people who have, you know, expertise in in other areas a little bit more than I have, you know. So um, make sure you give the, the, the thumbs up so that these videos go out because we are promoting their channels while we're at it as well. And it's better for them, you know, also if the video does well. I like to play a game when we're doing the, the, the live shows with the thumbs up. You might know it already because you've come to quite a lot of my live shows where we look at the numbers of how many people have are on a viewing and then we, we, we get like, okay, okay, now we need to compete with the numbers of thumbs up for how many people are viewing. Right. <laughs> so we're going to do so that, guys. It, it, it's, it's There's 100 and nine people viewing at the moment. Now, you may be seeing different figures, but it's because we are um, – we are broadcasting out to four different platforms, but we have 109 of you in. Uh, it was up a bit higher earlier. Um, so let's see if we can get up to the 109 at least, all right? Uh, there's no reason. Marty's given you tons of information. There's no reason you shouldn't give that like. It doesn't cost you a penny. Right, okay. <laughs> it's fun too. Like, we, let yeah. me look at it later and see how many we've got, you know. Uh, it just adds to the to the element of it all. But, yes, it does. Uh, anyway, let's keep let's, firing uh, away. Let's eh? get on. So the next question comes from Pam. Can you use oyster shell like the stuff I have for baby chicks? Uh, oyster shell, yeah, it's just a bit like anything. It's got another type of mineral in it. I can't think of the name at the moment. You might know what it is. I can't. I just it's it's eluding me. But um, yeah, anything to do with it comes out of the ocean uh, has different minerals and things in it other than the calcium. So yeah, yeah, for sure. Cool. All right. Um, so this isn't a question, but I just wanted to pull it up because it's uh, some Janet's thanking me for everything she's learned. So I appreciate that, Janet, and thank you for bringing that up. Um, right, let's have a little look else what we got. Hi, it? Janet. Is <laughs> Janet um, one of your followers as well? No, nah, nah, no, just thought okay. I'd say hello. I like the thumbnail there, <laughs> the little, <a> little profile. <laughs> yeah. All right, okay, let's have a little look here. Guys, just for reference, okay, if you can put your questions in uh, capitals uh, with a Q in front of it, it'll just make my life a lot easier going through these. I am looking at setting up a different system, but I'm trying to learn it at the moment, which will give you a specific chat box for you to put a question in, and I'll pull that into a new window for me. So I'll make my, my life much easier. I'm not sure if this is a question, bear with me. Martin, Tony, when I hear folks say it's, uh, too much to garden. I ask them, how much does it cost to build your own grocery store? <laughs> I like that. <laughs> that That's really good. Did The funny thing is, it's funny, I was writing a script earlier for a video. Um, I'm, uh, I know we're going off topic here a little bit, but um, uh, I've got some pretty lofty plans for next year guys and uh to do that that's why I'm, I'm just live streaming at the moment not putting out main videos because i'm trying to prepare ready for next year and um uh, one of those was talking uh within the video i was talking about the cost of gardening and um that it is expensive but means we've brought this up on here i will i will say you know yeah it's expensive but it's like any other hobby when you think about it only this one keeps you fit it feeds your family you know it, it helps with your mental sort of issues if you've got them it, it is just a brilliant all-round hobby right i mean you can go and play golf let me tell you something that's an expensive hobby right you can go and play you know, all of these sort of things, you can go swimming, it's expensive, you can go cycling, it's expensive. It doesn't matter what hobby you have, there's money to spend there. Like for myself, I I, I don't drink, I don't smoke, <laughs> you know, yeah. I don't smoke or anything, I have the odd drink now and then, but um, I don't smoke or anything like that, so why shouldn't I spend on my hobby? You know, anything that's going to make my life easier and give better nutrient-dense food to my family, I'm all for spending money on that, you know? Can I add something to that? Yeah, you, of course you can, mind? yeah. Yeah. I'm going to like, cause 
and I don't want to get like into a debate here, but I would actually say it's not expensive. I no, I suppose it isn't if you if you look at um, if if you want to sort of breadline it and you look and you take the cost of food that you haven't got to buy into consideration and and things like that. It isn't, but I mean you can make it expensive, right? Let's not yeah, yeah, let's yeah, not beat yeah. about the bush, right? <laughs> um, you know, I've got seventeen different gardening hoes sat in my shed, and I really only use four of them. So you right. can make it expensive, all right? Yeah, that's, um, that's, so, that's true. So my, my point is, yes, you can bootstrap it, right? You can produce all your own compost, which I'd recommend, guys, right? Um, but um, And you can just get yourself a spade, a fork, a rake, you know, a hoe and a trowel and just bootstrap everything else, right? But, you know, at the end of the day, it's like anything else. The more you get into a hobby the more you want to invest in that hobby to make your life easier and better and everything else. And, you know, I, if you'd spoken to me 15 years ago, I would have told you I, there's no way on earth will I have two 36-foot uh, tunnels and, uh, you know, two 17-foot square sheds. And, you know, but I've got them now, you know. And um, because I can, I suppose, you know. And... But that, that's the thing. It's my hobby. If I want to spend on it, I'm going to spend on it, you know. But you can. You are right. You can bootstrap it and you can and you can garden on next to nothing. Go and get a couple of old tools from someone, even if it's on Marketplace or something like that, and a couple of packs of seeds and, you, and you're off. You're going, you know. So you are yeah, right. It all depends say. on scale, doesn't it? You yeah, know, like absolutely. How much you want to scale out, it becomes yeah. expensive. Yeah. You want to sort of bring it down. But, you know, I think getting back to the composting side of things, and this is like – where I wanted to say where it's not expensive because when we're bringing in all our own inputs, all we've got to do is supply a carbon, you yeah. know, and if we're patient, then it becomes, it becomes very cheap. So, um, and when you're you talking know, like, about carbon, um, one of the scripts I wrote today was all based on carbon around composting. So uh, that is something that's coming up guys. So you'll have that as well. You'll know exactly what you need for that too. Awesome. Anyway, I don't want to get a debate here. Cool. No problem. <laughs> so question, I have tons of worms in my no-dig garden and I practice direct composting. Can I move in a particular type of worms? Uh, comment a bit on topic kinds of worms, please. Ooh. Well, if you've bought, if you've bought compost worms in a pack, you would have, you'd have a different, whole lot of different varieties in there. They very rarely just sell one because it's so hard when you've got, when you're worm farming, all these worms, they mix together. They sneak out of other farms and get in other ones, and they don't crossbreed or anything like that. But if you really want to just sort of really separate yourself and you're in the UK, look at the um, the night Europe, European Nightcrawler. That's the one that you may want to separate because they go deeper um, without getting, you know, otherwise we're going to get into the whole, like a new book <laughs> about worm farming. But... I would just look at, if you're in the UK, look at the, the night crawler for the UK. If you're in a hot temperature, look at the night crawler for, uh, it's called the African night crawler. So you've got, I think it's European night crawler, African night crawler, two different climates, two different types of worms. If you live in a climate like me, you can have both. Yeah, but yeah. that's probably You might have just given answer. me the title for book number four. <laughs> 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 right. Yeah. Okay. So, um, Steve Digwell again is uh, saying most wood chip now in the UK is being sold for biomass fuel. So, uh, and it is being, you know, quite profitable. And that's what I'm saying. This sort of uh, free resource that they used to pay to get rid of, that they were quite happy to take to gardeners now, they're now able to sell because of what's happening in, you know, in, you know, in the world and everything else. Um, next question comes from jh is there a common superfood to add to a compost bin for the worms uh you, you can buy an organic chicken pellet that would be uh if any of the like worm farmers that are doing professional worm farmers are watching this i didn't say that <laughs> <laughs> don't attack me uh because chicken I, pellets they, they it's, the worms love them don't they yes the protein so anything yeah. that's high in protein uh, look, they just eat everything, man. It's like I said at the beginning of the video, give them more of a balanced diet and you'll just do much better. Give them a bit of everything. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 
Okay, I'm just scrolling through. I'm trying to catch up with the chat. I'm not even halfway down yet, guys. So I know we are running behind the, the chat that's there, but it's always the way with... Uh, with I can answer a bit quicker if that so, helps. No, no, it's fine. We'll get to them. Um, so Pam Clark's got a question. The worms I'm getting in my compost heaps are different to the worms you need for a wormery. Yeah, because they're native worms, but generally, like I was saying before, they're coming up vertically and they're going back down vertically and pulling it. So if you think about when you put a compost pile on a, on some land, you're actually healing that piece of land because you're attracting yeah. worms from the outside of the, from the area and moving them into that zone. And then they're working that piece of land. And, and they're so, creating waterways, airways, and all yeah. sorts of stuff. And they're leaving their feces behind them. That it, and that's the thing. And the, the, there's a, a study that's actually been done um, when a building site has been, you know, when they've literally churned the ground till it's orange because of all the clay has been brought up. If you just put, you know, an eight inch layer of compost across the top of that. It brings the worms back in and it just repairs that ground within a couple of years. It's amazing, yeah. you know, and uh, and it's why, you know, no dig is so good because you're not destroying all of that life that's underneath, you know, all the work they've done. Because you put a spade in that and you've just destroyed all the structure. You've destroyed, you know, all of the microbial life, the fungi and everything else that's going on down there. It's amazing when you actually look at what goes on underneath your feet. It's just it's a, just a whole different world, and most people don't even know it's there. You're healing the land at the same time, and you know I, I've battled for years with this tiny as an organic farmer gardener, yeah. even like uh, on big farms and things like that, and even early YouTube stuff with homesteaders and things digging, and I'm saying why are you why are you digging? And they're going, but the soil's getting acidic when it's raining. I'm going, yeah, because you're digging, you're killing everything. And I just give people a bit of a run, a quick idea, and so they can understand it. So when you dig, you, you're killing all the biology, right? And that all that biology that's in the ground essentially comes another type of blood and bone. And so that all that dead matter is what the plants are feeding on. And then so you basically you, every time you kill it, you've got less and less matter. And what happens is is we end up with um, soil degradation, and the soil becomes hydrophobic and lifeless yeah. and so when we're adding to the top we're not killing that biology it's, it That's gets right. better and better and and it's what and i talk about the microbial life in soil quite a lot in this it's not just about composting it's explaining that whole process about how microbes eat each other and how they go for you know with the pro you know the uh, photons and stuff like that all uh, all about everything in, in in loads of detail and um and in fact like you know this comment you know from graham tony your books turned me into a compost freak recently <laughs> uh, my compost has cooled That's down awesome. to 60 celsius this week uh thought we would be calling the brigade at one point you know and 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 that's the thing you know um you want it hot but just bear in mind graham you don't want it to get too hot all right but if it is nice and hot it's you know, in that thermophilic stage, it's killing all those weed seeds and everything else. And, uh, and you know, it's brilliant at that point. And what it's doing, it's breaking down all the lignins that are in the, the, the wood and the hard uh, things, ready for those worms and everything else to take advantage of that. Yeah, okay. how I did my hot ones is I have a hot with the wind dryer where it's hot yeah. and then the other end still finish. The worms move in in their own time. Yeah, in, absolutely. In, you yeah. know. Yeah, yeah I, I couldn't agree more. Okay, uh, so Rob's asking, do you ever see worms on the beach? Oh, we got beach worms. So we <laughs> have type of worm. yeah, we have uh, worms here called leg worms, and they're in the beach. They leave little casts on top of the sand. So um, people fish with them here. They catch that's them. Right. That's right. Same, same here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I spent two years out um, in Australia, Marty, so I'd done a fair bit of fishing. Uh, ah. I stayed in Mackay and Canberra and Sydney, and but I spent a long time up in uh, Mackay. I spent right. a couple of weeks scuba diving on the reef over there. And Are you like your fishing? I, I did when I was younger, yeah. Yeah, okay. I, I don't so much now. Like, you know, it's, I haven't got time now. I'm too busy making yeah. content for these lovely folks. <laughs> 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 right, Okay um 
So in Chester County News, uh, question added a quarter acre to the garden plot. That's a nice little plot of land to add. Covered with leaves and horse manure, then black plastic, heavy clay soil after two inch rain, the worm surfaced and drowned in the plastic. What's your thoughts? Do you want me to answer that one? Yeah, go on. The are getting hard. That's getting why you're harder. here. They're getting harder. They're getting harder, these guys. I had some nice, simple ones at first. Okay. Uh, they're breaking so you in easy, see. Please, no one get angry at me. <laughs> We're not going to answer this because I always just be as honest as possible. And, you know, you obviously you're going to get some people who maybe disagree. But, you know, you've got your covered with leaves and horse manure. Great. Putting black plastic over it, not a good idea. Because the fact is you're losing you're losing oxygen. So always think about when you're building gardens, how would, you know, I, I, I'm a Christian. I always look at creation, uh, how things are done. Look at creation and go, how does creation do this? Now, does creation go through and lay down black plastic? Not really sort of thing, you know. It's all about just sort of like mulch layers laying on top, like no, no dig systems, adding to the top, adding to the top once you've got a garden and allowing it to uh, work naturally. So I, I would just be really careful. Even weed mat, I just hate, hate that stuff. Um, anything to do with plastics on the ground, um, you know, it depends if you're farming and things, they still use it, but it can cook the soil. So you've really got to that, know what you're that's doing. That's what I was with saying, plastic. you know, because they tend to use um, plastics. If they're taking over like a new area of no dig, um they, they'll put like black plastic sheet down or even clear sheet to get the weed seed to germinate and then that solar sun burns that weed seed off because of the heat and everything else gotcha but where you're uh adding a compost layer to attract worms in it's the last thing you want to do like marty said you're killing uh, everything that's underneath there because of the heat firstly but secondly you're preventing oxygen getting down here it's turning anaerobic because of everything yeah. that's dying and it's not able to gas off so you've got to think of these things when you're doing that um the point is you've put manure and leaves on the compost surface that's a mulch so effectively it's doing the job of the plastic anyway you don't need the plastic as well um mm. It's a good question though, because it's a yes. very common thing that happened that happens. So thanks for the question. Yeah. So um it's just a comment this really. I'm loving how beautiful worm family is bringing all parts of the world together. Do you know, in general, that's what gardening is like all you know, just the whole sort of niche of gardening. You know, people are generally pretty good and uh you, you know, they'll 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 talk forever and a day all about gardening and and it's nice now that we can do that all about this topic of worm composting and stuff so it's great hey deborah she's one of my worm wranglers on the channel <laughs> oh hey deborah and welcome <laughs> to simplified gardening she's a um, hardcore enthusiast she loves it <laughs> brilliant so, tony marty thank you very much for the live i'm so glad i got the reminder on youtube well janet thank you for letting me know you had a reminder on youtube because YouTube's recently turned around and said that they are very shortly going to be stopping sending you guys emails if you're subscribed, all right? They've released a lot of new information lately. So if you haven't already, okay, uh, I either get across to the Facebook group, the link will be in there, or you can go across to the website and sign up for the newsletter. I'll let you know when we're live or when a new video comes out every time because we can't rely on YouTube doing it. So if you don't want to miss anything, just yeah. get on one of those sort of things, okay? Um, Pam Clark, giving the lives a thumb up. Thank you very much. Oh, uh, what number are Pam. we at now? Uh, we're at 109. I don't know what we are on the likes because I'm not on. Uh, oh, you can't see it. And and don't forget, we've got different for, uh, different platforms in here. So you may see certain amount of likes on YouTube, a different amount of likes on Facebook, a different amount of likes on Twitter. And we're in two groups on Facebook. So <laughs> but okay. whatever yeah. you are, guys, thumbs it up and give it a like, all right? Because it's, yeah, I, I do I, the Bush Ranger, the Aussie Bush Ranger <laughs> thumbs up. <laughs> I've got sound uh, effects for that one, generally. <laughs> here we are. Look, so, in Chester County News is saying Starbucks grounds for gardens. Yeah, you know, awesome stuff. With him all day long. Uh, Jane, hiya. Welcome uh, into the live. Uh, I've picked a day. There's no football on, so there was no excuse. Uh, thanks, Danny. All ordered. Great Christmas present for any gardener. Uh, yes, it is. And, uh, guys, in case I haven't shouted about it enough, Jane's on about the book. All right. Um, 
you know, we've got to be careful wherever you are now, right? The, we're getting close to Christmas if you want it before Christmas, because there is a it's a print on demand book. And um, you'll be able to go if you want to go into your local shop, it don't matter where you are, Australia, America, you know, uh, UK, South Africa, wherever you are, walk into your local store and ask them to order it for you if you uh, don't want to buy it on Amazon or whatever the case being. You, but you can get it on many platforms online, OK, including, you know, uh, like Apple and things like that. You can download a copy there. Wow, that's great. So, um Let's have a look what else we got here. Uh, it's quite an interesting one, actually. Why didn't I show when I started by accident? Bear with me a second. There we are. What is the NPK of quality worm castings? This is from Brian. Wow, you do fire them harder and harder at me each time, Tony. I'll see you later. I'm just going. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> um, NPK, right. Nitrogen, cast, potassium, and calcium. Great question. It really comes down to what you're feeding your worms, really. Like, if you give them a more of a balanced diet, you're going to get a, a sort of a higher range of nitrogen, potassium, calcium. You want to go for a higher it's phosphorus nitrogen. as well, there, isn't it? Nitrogen, yeah. potassium, and phosphorus. Sorry. sorry, sorry, getting it wrong here. So, um, the nitrogen side of things, if you're feeding more coffee grounds and things like that, you got to be careful not to heat up your compost system too much if you're adding too much. But that'll actually provide about another 11, 11 types of minerals. And look, it, you can go and buy worm castings, and they'll all have different um, NPKs on it. So really the, the best way is just give them as much variety of food and then you'll get the best sort of NPK. But can I say something here regarding nit this NPK system, right? Is we've got to be really careful thinking of this mindset because what we're doing is we're going back and we're actually getting, allowing the marketers that have produced these NPK products to stay in our mind, right? We've been hit so hard with it all we think about is this and sort of like to do with um, when you're feeding, say, a pot, you need to, a pot plant, you need to think more along those lines because the plant's feeding in a different way. But when we're feeding plants biology, the microbial system is actually giving the plants what it needs. So I'll just give you a quick little breakdown. Sunlight hits leaves like solar leaves. It sends sugars down the energy down into the root system, which then produces sugars for the microbiology to feed on. And then the microbiology and the fungi and everything goes, oh, wow, this is awesome. Let's send what the plant needs up through the system and goes back through. But when we're thinking NPK, 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 we're actually removing the mindset of how we want plants to feed naturally. So when at the beginning, when you're starting a new garden, you're thinking more along these lines of NPK. But as your garden improves, we're thinking this is the mantra that I like to push. And I, I'm sure Tony would agree on this. You need to feed the soil, not your plants. It's the other mm. way around. Funny because it just happens to be the byline of my book. <laughs> I did not know that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's 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 it, man. Feed the soil, not the plants. Yeah, absolutely. I couldn't agree with you more. And I think that the the issue you are you're right. Um, you know, the MPK is because um, they need to give the public something when they package something, and they are the primary um, nutrition that plants require. The problem yeah. you got is that there is so many micro and macronutrients that plants need as well that are not counted, um, and they. You know, they, they can't put them in because otherwise you'd be paying thousands of pounds a bag of compost type of thing. You know, it only comes from life in the soil. And um, and, and that's why, like you've just come out now, you know, feed the soil, not the plants. And that's why it's the byline in my book and everything else. I'm, I'm a big thing. Go give the soil everything it needs so the microbial life are fed. They 
create war under that ground. They're eating yeah. each other, you know, they're dying, they're defecating, and all this is all that micro and macronutrients that the plants require, as well as the nitrogen and everything else. So um, I am with you, um, but it's just one of those things that have been sort of forced upon people as we've become more commercial with uh, growing. Yeah, um, yeah. But I, just right, just to like top that. it off, top it off at the end there. Um, it's, I'm not saying it's not vital. I think it's actually vital yeah. for when we when we need to understand to feed the plants. But once we get the soil right, the soil um, what I found over the years when we were doing it correctly, it actually rebalances itself. And people, you know, like this is where I get a little bit annoyed at times. They go, "Oh, I've got this white spot. I've got this thing going on my on my plant." I need to add more of this because we're thinking in an NPK cycle to adding to plants. So basically, and people get annoyed at me and they go, what do I do? I go, add more compost. Yeah. Put and, more and, mulch on. and again, this is the thing why, um, and I might go against you a little bit here. I brought out a video a couple of years ago about why rock dust is a scam. Now, I don't think rock dust is um, uh, a bad product, right? Don't don't misunderstand me because it's full of nutri uh, minerals and and stuff that and especially with worms they they you know they they can process this but it's the microbial life that processes it right um yeah. but we already have enough of this stuff in our soil it's been put there for millions of years we don't need to go to some quarry mine it and add it to our soil what we need is the life in the soil to convert that because you can go and add 10 ton of rock dust to your garden if the if the life in the soil isn't there it's not converting those minerals into plant available form and yeah. th this is my thing about people they get in their head oh i've got to add rock dust to my garden because that's going to add the minerals to my plants and they don't really understand the process and that's why i made that video that is a scam you know no, i agree uh, i agree with you and, I, I do uh, actually i agree with you the soil's got to get right yeah yeah, yeah absolutely All right mm -hmm. okay so let's move on the next question uh does lofty plans mean you're going to grow stuff in your attic? Absolutely not. Uh, Rob, that, that, that is, uh, earlier on I said I've got lofty plans for next year. Um, Rob, who's in the chat, he uh, grows all his seedlings up in the attic. Um, you won't find me doing that because, number one, my attic is freezing cold. And um, number two, I've got other spaces I can do it. So, uh, but no, um, what I mean by lofty plans, like this year, a lot of you know, we brought out the book, but with the illness and everything else that I had and, and what have you, um, there's not been a huge amount of content that's come out. Um, but next year, um, I'm investing a little bit here and there for stuff and the content is going to be a lot more uh, so that we can bring out this sort of quality to you on a regular basis so that's what i mean by that uh, and how, how while i'm here mm. while i'm here guys uh, and we've been talking about composting masterclass in february uh, i'm hoping it'll be february my second book will be available which is called your first vegetable gardening or your first vegetable garden is called. Um, and that's about, uh, it's really set up to walk you through a complete year in starting uh, in August of prepping your garden, going right the way through to seed saving the following year, producing your harvest and everything else. And that's really designed, not just for new gardeners, because, um, you know, seasoned gardeners will still get something from it, but it's there as a, a book, especially if you are new. And I'm hoping to have that out sort of around about February or March next year. That's in the middle of edit at the moment. Um, I've got the cover for it, and I'll be putting that out to you shortly. But I just thought I'd let you know while we're on this. Well, can so I, there's um, loads coming. You're going to have some giveaways for that? When we will, out? and we'll, uh, we'll end up doing um, some live streams or videos on other channels as well and we'll give out some copies to the audience too and what have you so so yeah Wonderful. we'll we'll do that um okay let's look let's see if we've got anything more yeah so it's going to be a bit of a busy year next year okay philip hurst love the compost in book thank you thanks very much philip i appreciate that uh with the 30 to 1 ratio you recommend as a perfect mix you also quote weeds are 30 to 1 so can 
can you just make compost heaps from just weeds? Yeah, they weeds. It's a funny thing. On generally thirty to one, but it really depends on what uh, what weeds. Now, when we're talking weeds, we're talking more of a woodier sort of type of leaf. You know, we're not talking. Um, you know, just like if you've got just really fine leafy stuff, okay. Um, but as a general rule, they're thirty to one. What I would I would do with weeds, though, I would still put them in with a carbon source because without uh, ensuring that you've got enough carbon, then you're going to end up with uh, too much nitrogen. It's going to turn to a smelly mess. It's going to turn anaerobic. Um, I would just incorporate them into the mix. OK, but when I'm saying 30 to 1 there, what I'm saying is that you don't need to add extra carbon to the mix because you've already got carbon within the mix from previous stuff. All right. So just to sort of qualify that. But, yeah, you could literally just pile up weeds and you can do this with pretty much anything. You can just pile it up and it will compost down. It will just take a lot longer um, you know, to, for that to happen. Maybe make a, um, a weed tea out of it. You know, yeah, put it in yeah. a big bucket, a big bucket of drum, and soak the weed out, and then get the liquid out, put that on your plants, and then throw that into the carbon. And that's very good for uh, perennial weeds. You know, those really deep rooted weeds like dandelions and things like that. That's really good for stuff like that. Okay, let's have a look. What else we got here? Um, I don't know if this is a question. Sorry, garden may ask for significant outlay, but the cost diminishes as one establishes the garden and the quality of food is worth every penny. I couldn't agree with you more. And it does, yeah. I mean, you know, I've spent a lot of money on my garden as we've gone and I know Marty's spending it on his now because he's got a ton of raised metal raised beds in there. Are they birdies? Yeah, yeah, actually. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I very Look, I'm totally blessed. Mark said, "Don't tell anyone," but he actually donated those yeah. those beds he's, to he's the a, garden. He's a he's a good sort, Mark. Um, mm. Yeah, so Birdie's beds, um, they're fabulous. I've got a couple here myself, and we can get them in the UK now, which is really nice, and they're really good quality because they last. I mean, Mark, I mean, you saw how much his garden flooded this year, and um, you know, and the beds it stood up like it never happened, which is great um okay let's have a little look guys we if you want to add anything marty while i'm scrolling through these looking for the yeah, questions sure uh, feel free sure. okay i've been i can read about eight questions at a time where i sort of am uh okay. in here but I, i'd like to get back to while you're scrolling through is just talk about you know the feeding the soil and yeah. sort of you know people moving away from um you know thinking on that npk sort of side of things you know as you said it's vital we need to understand what these nutrients are but to you know like pests and stuff like that actually don't attack plants that are healthy pests are designed to attack plants that are actually not healthy this is how nature works on itself and so the more that we feed the soil and the healthier the plants get the um they become more pest resistant and they build up stronger cell walls. And so when a plant's got a stronger cell wall, uh, the pest can't penetrate the, um, the, the outside of the plant as much, and it will go for the sickly plant before it will go for the healthier plant. And, you know, like, and this is, I've seen this a lot in farming situations where people have got really great farms, healthy soils, good ecosystems, then right next door they've got this horrible farm and it's just covered in sprays and pesticides and things, and they they you can look at them from the sky and just see light and day what the difference is. So just think about feeding your soil and getting the plants healthy and you, you'll, the, the pest problems will slow down uh, over time. Brilliant. Okay. So um, Amelia is asking, do I have a Discord channel? Amelia, yes, I have set one up. I haven't launched it yet. It is all set up. I'm not sure if I can access it while I'm by you. Bear with me one moment. And I, might be I don't able know to how you it. keep up with it all. Tony, um, like, <laughs> you've got so much going on, uh, mate. <laughs> and you're working, you're a firefighter. Uh, yeah, and uh, <laughs> the, the family uh, keep reminding me of that as well. <laughs> um, right, so uh, Simplified Gardening Discord, uh, it's all there, it's all set up, right, ready to go, guys. Um, I've just got to basically uh, finish putting in 
uh, just a couple more rules and stuff like that, and then I will launch it, and you'll be able to get on there. You'll be able to have your conversations, and it'll be a place that we can promote the videos and stuff like that as well. So if you, once I get it up and running properly, um, th then that Discord will be running for you. All right, Amelia. So just bear with me. It is coming. It's nearly all done. Okay. Um, so Chris is putting Marty's channel back in the chat. Great. Uh, Oh, so we have little Lisa on here. Um, so Lisa's going to get chickens next year. That's awesome, Lisa. Um, it'll be like the nine I've got at the moment. Yes, there is bird flu and there's all sorts of stuff we've got to do, but you can't beat your home, your own chicken eggs because the quality uh, compared to store-bought eggs is just second to none. Um, mm. you know, you just, and you get the added benefit of the shell as well. So, you know, you can put that back in your compost. So, uh, Lisa, it's great to, to see you. We haven't had a little chat for a little while. So I'm glad I saw your message. Um, uh, Lisa Marty, just for reference, um, uh, challenged me to, uh, a pumpkin grow off last year mm. and a couple of grow offs this year. And, um, uh, Matthew's her dad, and um, I think Lisa, I think you're 12 now. If I'm wrong, just have to correct me. But um, yeah, yeah Lisa. It's, it's a great age for growing. And do you know what? They've set the back garden up perfect. You know, she's got all sorts going on there. They keep sending me little videos and stuff. It's brilliant. Congratulations. Um, so Brian is saying that uh, he's grown. I grow my own worms and feed mostly from my garden. Also use natural materials for bedding. That's great. Uh, I think you must be a bit ahead of me. Uh, Tony from Little Farmer's Farmer. Hey, mate. Uh, is it right to say that adding ground eggshell not only adds calcium, but it's beneficial for the worm's digestion? We already covered that, Tony. Yes, it is. They use it uh, for like a grit in their gizzard to help grind the food down. Um. So Rob is saying rock dust is better known as quarry dust. Yeah. And it's more of a volcanic rock, though, as well. Uh, like some of the um, the varieties could buy, like vermin and uh, remin and stuff, is is a more of a volcanic rock, whereas um, I'm not sure, like, if just... I know you they, you can use just quarry dust, but um, I'm not sure There's if lots it's... lots of different types. Yeah. It depends on where it comes from. Right? It, yeah. Uh, Right, so what's this? Uh, Simplified garden in Canada and maybe elsewhere for all I know, nurseries sell glacial dust. It's, is it the same as rock dust? Yeah, as we're just saying, it's uh, all different types, um, you know, so. Yeah. Uh, Basalt's the main one. So if you think that the, the main ingredient that comes out of a volcano that breaks down and creates red soil is called basalt. And so some people sell this basalt dust. And then there's all these other minerals contained inside of it. It is a bit of a scam, but it goes good on grass. If you just, you know, if you're a grass person, you can throw it out in your grass, it goes pretty good. But yeah, without getting too deep into it, just get your feed the soil. Yeah, I'm nearly there. I think we are pretty much through most of those. So um, we're coming up now to just over an hour and a half. So I think what we're going to do now is, uh, run this down a little bit marty i want to thank you for coming on before you go anywhere just remind everybody where they can find you and uh and then obviously you can convince them now's your time to come across and have a look at your channel and <laughs> and everything else that you want to do oh uh, look uh, firstly thank you for I'm, I'm totally honored to come on the show uh tony i'm really stoked to be here and if people can sort of see my face i'm obsessed i'm like you i'm obsessed with growing food and gardening and I always have since little boy and i've got a channel called marty's garden over there i run it from um the byron shire on the um in a subtropical region teaching worm farming uh composting systems and growing gardens and putting that all together and so we can bring in all our inputs that we use for cooking and all different types of things and turning it into something valuable so you know the mantra is turning something into some waste into something valuable feed the soil not the plants stop and, nicking uh, my bay lanes that's, that's, <laughs> i wish i knew that before i come but, uh, i think it's unreal that it's on the front of the book yeah. um so yeah brilliant that's, that's me marty's garden youtube Great.
Marty, uh, have a stand in the back, mate, and I'll come out and have a chat with you in a moment, all right? I won't be in okay. a second now. Right, guys, so we've had loads here. Uh, Tony uh, Remin is probably one of the, the, the most famous ones in the UK, all right? So just to let you know. Right, so guys, you know, thank you very much for coming. I hope this was of interest to you guys who uh, want to start your own worm farms or want to start worm composting or just want to know how to attract more worms into your normal compost, you know? So, um, uh, so you know, the aim here is to try and get people on that I think you are going to benefit from their advice and knowledge and everything else. And uh, and I hope that's what we've been doing. Now, next week, we actually have Danny coming on. Before I go, I'm just going to have to tell you when that is because of my working patterns, as you know. And I will set it up earlier on. Um, but next week's will be Thursday evening. Okay, so we are going to be a day earlier so it'll be next thursday 7 p.m and that'll be the next one on and we're going to have danny we haven't decided on a topic yet so you'll all have to be waiting in suspense for that but um danny will be on next week and we will have a chat with that so if, in the meantime think about some questions you might want to ask danny as well because we'll uh drag those out of him while he is here. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this live stream. Don't forget to give it a like on the way out. And I'm Tony O'Neill. This is Simplified Gardening. Remember, you reap what you sow, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.